Hello, Dr. Sonic. Thank you very much for being back live with us today. How are you? Good. Good. Nice to see you again, Soren. And nice, nice to be with your community. Thank you very much. Thank you on behalf of the entire Dental Leaders community for taking time for this interview. We very much enjoy your lecture as part of the Dental Leaders Summit 2020. And thank you very much for that. Thank you. You've done a phenomenal job putting together this community, especially during these times. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. We prepare a set of questions for you. I'm sure mm -hmm. the entire community will enjoy them. And uh, of course, your, your advices and your answer will be highly appreciated by the, by the doctors from dental leaders community. So I would start with our first question for you. How do you believe that continuous education will evolve, especially during these times that we are living with the pandemic and with the travel restrictions? Well, it's already evolving. You know, we see that. I mean, th every now and then something comes along, you know, that changes, changes the evolution of the world. You know, the invention of fire. You know, when we had fire, that changed things. So we can cook, we can change things. When we started to have a grow crops, that's changed. The industrial revolution. And we're going through another revolution right now. It's the digital revolution. And that happened before COVID. The digital revolution started a number of years ago. It probably was potentiated a lot by the internet and going global. So it's really made the world extremely small. This conversation, I'm sitting in Connecticut outside of Manhattan, and you are, you know, in Romania, and I'm speaking to people from all over the world. That did not happen, you know, when I graduated from dental school. So continuing education is part and parcel of that. Education has changed. The classic version of education, where you go to a schoolroom, when you read, where you write, where you regurgitate, when you tell the teacher back what the teacher is saying to you, that's changed. That's probably never going to be the same. It's happening right now in universities in the United States, and I'm sure all over the world. Universities are open, but people are not going to school. Some of them are going to school. Some of them are staying home. Some are doing what's called a hybrid, half the time in school, half at home. So we're learning now online. So in dental education, it's not much different. It's education. So there's going to be a lot more online learning. There's going to be a lot more digital learning. It was happening before COVID, and this is just 10 x it. The difference right now is that we as dentists are not completely comfortable learning online. We're getting more comfortable. Uh, I've been around a while. I'm 67 years old. So when I started my dental career, we had no online. We had no digitization. Nothing was digital back then. We were taking cameras. We had Kodachrome films. I had to wait for film to be developed before I'd see the picture. I take pictures of my patients and about three weeks later, I would get the pictures back and I'd have to take three or four pictures at different focus focal lengths at different F stops to make sure that I would get the right exposure. I would never know. Today, everything is immediate. So what digitization has done is has made things a lot more immediate. So that means the speed of change is increasing. So the speed of change is increasing now faster than it ever has. And what's happening is not only the speed of change is increasing, but the speed of change in which is changing is increasing. So everything is happening exponentially. And I think you see that. Obviously, you're one of the leaders of this. So what's the future? It's going to be a combination. It's going to be a hybrid. I know as a student, I still like the human connection. We still like to touch things. And as dentists, we still have to do things physically. It's pretty cool being a dentist because we still, our job is not going to change that much. We're still going to be working on patients and dealing with human interactions. And that human connectivity has to still be there. We still have to work with our hands and do things. So we have to still learn that. So I could teach things digitally, but you still, it's important to have some mentorship. And so it's going to be a combination, but right now the best we can do is do things online. And we're going to have a lot more modules where people are going to be sharing online, showing surgical procedures, showing the dentist do it live, working on models. And there's all sorts of things that, you know, we're going to be, we're going to be developing uh, as we proceed through the next uh, few years. I think we'll have another, uh, few months to maybe even a year to work this out because I don't think we're going to have that much live education for, for a while, certainly in a much more limited fashion. Indeed. And we need to keep hope. And of course, as you said, we, the process has already started many years right. ago. So it's only that we need to adapt and to, to of course, to make the best out of it. Of yep. course. Thank you very much. I, I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> our next question for you, what advice would you give to young doctors in the dental leaders community? Yeah. Well, I think it's the same advice I give for any young person, you know, figure out where you want to go and then look at people who are there and see if you can 
maybe speed up your journey. One of the mistakes I made as a young man was I probably uh, did not know exactly where I was going. Um, so when I got out of, when I was in dental school, I went because it was, you know, I wanted to be a doctor. My family said, that's what you got to do. You do that. So I was just going through the motions and I was not a big fan of school. I didn't like it. I didn't like sitting in the classroom. I did not like being told by people that were 30 years older than me that didn't practice in prior practice how to do what I was supposed to do. I did not like jumping through hoops and doing all these requirements. It wasn't really thinking. And it wasn't until I got into my residency program when I became a periodontist that I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed what I was doing. And at that point in time, I decided I started to look at people that knew, you know, what I wanted to learn. And I would hang out with those people and I'd figure it out. And I really just, at that time, I wasn't really thinking of, you know, who I was just thinking of the how, you know, how do I do what I do? And I was looking at procedures, you know, I want to learn how to do a gingival graft, a flap and those type of things. And today, a lot of dentists do that. So the advice, the advice I would, I would recommend to young people is spend three or four hours by yourself in a room and write by yourself. Just say, who are you? What do you do? What, how do you see yourself? Where do you want to be? What does your future look like? Do you want to work for somebody? Do you want to be your own practitioner? Do you want to specialize? Do you like doing everything in your practice? Do you want to be all things to all people? Sort of figure out who you want to be. And if you don't really know who that is, look around and see people who you want to be like. You know, that's the role of mentorship. I do that today. A lot of people who are my mentors I've never met. You know, I've never met Albert Einstein or Stephen Jobs, you know, and these people who have shaped a lot of what I'm doing. I have a lot of mentors that I have met. Ken Beecham, you know, the, the associate dean at NYU has mentored me in education. Dennis Tarnow, who I've known since 1984, has been a strong mentor of mine. You know, but I never met P.I. Brandenmart. I never met that guy, and, but he's influenced by what we do implants. So a lot of mentors can be done remotely and a lot of them can be done closely. And then if you have the opportunity to talk to them, get advice from them and then figure out where you want to go and do everything possible to get there. Now, here's the thing, where you want to go today may not be where you want to go tomorrow and that could change. And so give yourself the freedom to change in the digital age, which we're in right now, things are changing rapidly. If I think that I want to be able to send you a fax and that you'll be able to respond to me immediately, that's probably not going to happen. I'll tell you a funny story. In the United States, I deal with a lot of physicians and I'm a dentist and I deal with physicians who deal with medical history and get, having to get clearance before I do surgery. If I call a physician, it's impossible to get a physician on the phone. They just don't have that capability. They don't give me my, their cell phone. They only give me an office phone and it's six or seven minutes on the phone to be told that they can't take it. They don't give me out their personal email. If I send the email to the office, they never get it. They don't respond to email. You know how physicians respond in the United States? By fax. If I send a fax to a physician within 24 hours, I'll get an answer. So they're still backwards a little bit. They have not gotten into the digital age. They're starting to, but because of rules and regulations and the government and what we call HIPAA in the United States, you know, we have a lot of privacy rules. It's very hard to get that information, of course. So things are changing very rapidly, try to find some mentorship and figure out where you want to go and make a commitment to that. And uh, that's not easy. And uh, it's not an easy, it's not an easy thing to do. Um, but it starts with making a commitment. And, and then after the next step, after making a commitment is, you know, having a little courage to take that next step. And that's hard. That's the hard part. Today in my own life, um, a lot of people look at me as a confident, successful guy. I am loaded with fear on a daily basis. Every day I have three or four things that I want to do. You know, all right, I got it. That's something new. I'm con con constantly challenging myself, but that's the way I like to be. I would assume that most people who come to your conferences are people who challenge themselves and want to achieve. They spend the time, they spend the money, you know, listening to this online and talking to other people in the community. Those are the kind of people that you want to be attracted to you because those are the achievers. Those are the doers. Those are the mover and shakers. You know, those are not the people that during COVID were sitting at home, you know, just watching reruns of old TV shows and old movies and eating potato chips and drinking diet soda and sitting on the couch. 
Those are people that have been doing things. And during COVID, you know, you're a good example of that, Soren. You've probably done more digitally and created more platforms than you ever would have had time for before because you had the time because the world had stopped. The world has stopped, but the people who are entrepreneurial, the doers, the movers, the shakers, those are the ones that were working while everybody else was still in bed in their pajamas. They were out there working. So Soren, I know you know what I'm talking about when I, when I, when I say that. Indeed. <laughs> okay. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Yes. You're welcome. So <clears throat> the last question that we have prepared for you, um, what are, in your opinion, top three important things in the professional evolution of any dentist? Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, I, I mentioned some of it in the, in the last question. But I think it's important to find some mentorship, figure out where you want to go. That's what. And as a young dentist, I remember I turned to a friend of mine, Mark Samuels, and I said to him, uh, we were, I was about 29 years old, and I mentioned some people that were well-known. Bert Langer was one of them, and Myron Nevins, another one who was another one of my mentors, uh, who I met back in 1984. And I said, you know, I said, one day I want to know these guys on a personal level and I want to be able to lecture all over the world. And my friend, Mark, looked at me, goes, well, that's that's a good goal. He goes, how are you going to do that? I go, I have no idea. <laughs> and that was 37 years ago. I said that to him and it did not happen in a year or two years or three years. It took time. And I think most dentists by nature are patient people. Um, you have to be patient to be a dentist because you don't become a dentist overnight. You have to go to school. You have to study. I think the most important thing is to figure out your goal, you know, where you want to be. What kind of dentist do you want to be? And why do you want to be a dentist? Do you want to do it to make money? Do you want to do it because you like doing surgery or implants or veneers? Or do you like to do it because you like to help people? Or do you like to build a business? Do you like to manage a team and build a network? I mean, all those things are part and part of dentists. We are really lucky that we are dentists because as dentists, we can do whatever we want. If you want to, not, if you want to start working at six in the morning and end at two in the afternoon, that's fine. If you want to go into work at three o'clock on a Sunday and work till midnight on a Sunday, you can. You can do whatever you want to do. If you want to just do implants, you can just do implants. If you want to just clean teeth, you can clean teeth. If you want to be restorative only, you can do that. If you want to partner with other people that have other skills, you can do that. So what's cool about being a dentist is you can do create whatever you want. If you want to be a teacher, you can be a teacher, a businessman, be a businessman, a clinician. All those things are part and parcel of dentists. And nobody can tell you what to do. If you want to be your own boss, you could be an entrepreneur. You don't have to be an entrepreneur. You can look for other, work for other people. So these are the questions you got to ask yourself. And I would do as a young dentist, figure out what those things are and then do it and then move in that direction. So, First thing you got to do is you got to figure out where you want to go. The second thing you do is you got to find people who are already where you want to go and use them and ask them for help in getting there. You know, as a busy person, people ask me every day for things. A lot of people at, don't ask me at all because they think I'm too busy. You want to get something, ask a busy person. Busy people were more than happy to help out. And most people who are teachers are more than happy to mentor you. So find some mentors and ask them. I've done that. I've done that. I've called many dentists at their home at night and had long conversations with them because they gave me their number. So find some people that can mentor you once you figure out where you want to go. And the third thing, which is real, really important, is devote yourself to education. Devote yourself to continuing education. It doesn't have to be every day. You may decide that one night a week, maybe it's Wednesday night, I'm going to read the journals for four hours. You may decide I'm going to take X number of courses per year. You may commit to taking, you know, one long three-day course every three months or one a year or maybe one course every quarter or maybe a course a week whatever it is for you commit to that education the more you educate yourself the more you're going to be exposed to ideas that you have no idea and i'll tell you the best thing that's done for me Brad, personally is teach pay it forward once you learn something if you can teach it to somebody else you really know it and i remember going to dental school my right out of my residency program. I was already a periodontist. I was, in the, I was at NYU clinic. I was an undergraduate clinic. And someone showed me um, a swollen parotid, which is the gland uh, over here on the right side of the face or left side. It's the one that, that you get that swells when you have mumps. And it empties into the mouth through a small duct. Also, the sublingual gland, which is underneath the tongue, empties into the mouth by ducts. I couldn't remember what the sublingual gland duct was called and what the parotid gland duct was called. I knew one was Stenson and one was Wharton's, but I couldn't remember if Wharton's was the parotid or the sublingual. 
I probably could get it right on a multiple choice test. But when I had to turn, turn to the student and say, I don't know if it's Stenton's or Wharton's. And the student turned to me and goes, that's Stenson's. I go, oh, okay, yeah. I will never forget what Stenson's duct is again. And that has happened to me over and over again. Every time I teach, I mean, when I come and teach for you, when I prepare a lecture, it's always a new lecture. It's always a different lecture. You know, answering these questions is going to be a different answer every time because it's going to involve. And it really makes me look at myself and what I'm saying. It's not going to be rote. It's going to be different every time. And that's what keeps it alive and keeps it exciting. So for me, one of the best things that I have done is teach. And I started to teach early on. I didn't know anything early on, but I started to teach. I started to teach students who don't know as much as I did. And as I've progressed during my career, I still teach students. I teach residents and I teach dentists that have been practicing for a period of time. And I, after 30, after 40 years since I've graduated from dental school, it's been 41 years, I still go to courses. And um, I was going to Europe twice a year to spend time with Marcus Herzler and Otto Zur and Istan Urban. And I had a whole list of other courses in Europe I was going to take, which I'm not taking at the moment because of COVID, but I still get very excited by listening to people you know, that are very good at what they do. Yes, thank you very much for that indeed. So never stop from evolving and education. It's one of the keys right. to, to evolve, absolutely. Never yeah. stop learning and just do it. <laughs> just do it, exactly. I think somebody else said that. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for your kind advices and for kind words. I'm sure they will be highly appreciated by the doctors from the dental leaders community. We thank you very much and uh, for sure we, we keep our finger crossed and hope to see us soon in person and to carry yeah. on our educational programs. Meanwhile, of course, we're going to look into the online version and probably we're going to move to hybrid version, uh, hopefully by next year. And slowly we'll see uh, the, the, the evolution where it will take us in terms of education. So thank you very much once again for taking time to be here with us live and stay safe and hope to see us soon. Same to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Have a lovely day. Bye.